Whiskey. This is a number that I like doing on my little baby banjo ukulele. But today I got a Martin little uke for the first time. And I feel like the song holds up in any context, even a cappella. Sam Cooke did it right when he did this one. It's called Bring It On Home. Well, if you Let's bring it on home. Pretty damn good with a little old ukulele, isn't it? Little baby. Uh-huh. I love it. Isn't that a sweetie one? It came from Hawaii, actually. It's a Martin, but a Hawaiian what? bought it. And I, I inherited it somehow. Well, it needed to be played and it's so happy. Like, it's awake and happy. Oh, no. All the instruments have life. I just carry it around in the car with me, so when I stop at a top lot, I just pick <laughs> it up and play it, you know? That's it. Yeah. And you don't have to worry with the big case. It's just in the back seat. You can yeah. be like, I'm ready to play. Hey, yeah. okay. well, I'm Valerie June. I am an earthling. I was born in Jackson, Tennessee, Madison County. I grew up at the edge of three counties, Crockett, Gibson, and Madison. And I'm from a very large family. And we are a singing family. Nobody played instruments growing up because it would have been chaotic because there were too many people. <laughs> and my mother and father would have lost their minds. But uh, what we did is we sang. We sang with all our hearts. And so I brought that into my adult life. And now I live in Brooklyn, New York. Originally born in Tennessee. But I had to leave. And I followed my heart. Followed my love all the way up to Brooklyn. And then I feel out of love, and then I feel back in love, but with a New Yorker, so I guess I'll stay in New York. <laughs> so how many people in your family? Well, there's five of us. We have a half-brother. He's older, so six total, really. But we didn't grow up with him, and then there's my brother Jason, me. Then I got another sister, another brother under me, and then two sisters. My younger brother does play. His name's Patrick Hockett, and he plays guitar, but everybody else, we just all sing. So. What was the, was your town really small? Yeah, it's a town of about 8,000, Humboldt, Tennessee is, and Jackson's the big city. Jackson is where you would go for anything you need 
and if you can find that, then you're to Memphis or Nashville. But um, Jackson has about, when I was growing up, it had about 60,000. But then it started growing really fast, so maybe 80 or 90 now. So that's the big town. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I always think that growing up in a small town is, uh, is a great thing. It kind of gives you character and you, you have to sort of figure things out on your own, but you have a lot of support because it's a small community and everything. And I think it's always great to have come from there as opposed to being born in Brooklyn. That's a whole different thing. Wow, I couldn't imagine being born in a big city. I try to think about it sometimes, what that could be like to grow up in a big city, but no, not me. <laughs> so I, they don't let me, since I've been interviewing people, they don't let me get out and see anybody play. So I, I barely caught a little piece of you. And uh, But tell me about your, your band and your style and talk about your music a little bit. Well, my music is the music for the spirit and for the heart. And the reason I say that is because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just get up there and I give it everything I got. And the way that I get songs is they come to me. Like I hear voices and they sing me songs. And they sing me songs kind of like you put on your headphones and you choose on your phone which song you're going to hear. I hear songs, just they come. And I don't have on headphones, but I'm walking around the world. I go to the grocery store, and as I'm whirling down the aisle, and I'm getting the milk or the sugar. Well, a song is being sung to me from God knows where. And these songs, they come in all different forms. So sometimes a country song comes, or sometimes a blues song comes. Sometimes a rock and roll song comes. Sometimes a soul song comes. I don't know what kind of songs they are. They just come. And I am the translator, so I have to sit there, and I have to be like, okay, I hear you and I have to get it out and they come in many voices so sometimes it'll be a soft voice that's really really gentle an angelic voice that's like ah! or a voice like an old black man like, mm -hmm. or it's like you know old lady voice na, 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 na. and I just go with the voices and I do exactly what they tell me to do and I try to honor them and serve them and I always say that it's very similar to when a composer is hearing an arrangement. And they have a symphony and they have to present this arrangement. So they heard the strings, they heard the horns, they heard the, like all the different parts, all the different, the bass. What is this symphony to do? And they hear it and they write it down. And then they give it to the symphony and they translate that. Well, with me, it's only voices. I hear the voices. I, as soon as I hear one voice, I hear a thousand voices. And what I have is a choir going on in my head 24 hours a day when I'm getting a song. And sometimes they come when I'm sleeping, when I'm dreaming. They come at different times. And as a songwriter, I have to be ready, always. And I write what I hear. And I sing it to you the way that I heard it being sung to me. Which sometimes is a fun thing and sometimes it's a challenging thing because maybe my voice can't get as high as what I heard. The angelic voices when they come, they're like really really high and pure and crystal clear like Alison Krauss's voice. Ah, real pretty. And my voice is more like squeaky and weird. So I have a hard time sometimes if I get a pretty voice being able to match my voice to what I'm hearing. But I do try. That's all I can do is try. <laughs> and do you write it down with like a pen? Uh, well, if I'm not at a place where I can write, I usually keep something with me so I can write. But if I'm not at a place to do it, then I keep it on repeat in my mind. Like, you know, I was boarding a plane, probably Southwest or something, when a um, Tennessee con time came to me. And I was boarding the plane. I had an instrument. I had a rolling bag. I didn't have time to write anything down. But I just kept singing it again and again. Running on Tennessee time. Running on Tennessee time. Until I was able to sit down and actually write it. So if I don't have the capacity to write the song at that time, I keep the first voice going again and again and again until I get somewhere where I can write it. Or I pull out my phone and I put it in there. Or I, like just immediately get my computer and put it in there it's like one of those things where you just stop what you're doing sometimes i'll be on the road driving and i'm like what pull the car over something's happening pull it over get the song because i have to serve the song i'm a servant you know i just have to be like what do you want me to do and even in the present moments with the songs they change because they're living like i described this baby being living and how it has a little life the songs have a life too 
and you know I just have to go with it and be alive with them. So one of the things I was going to ask you was to tell me about your writing process, but I don't have to ask that now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> More than anybody told me today about that. Great, great answer. Um, uh, what do you think about this whole luck thing, and how did you get here? The oh, luck reunion. I was pretty lucky to get here, I think. I think that this luck wrench is really magical. And the reason I know that is because when I go places, I look for signs. So I was feeling quite emotional on stage because I recently lost my father, and some songs bring that up. And as I left the stage, I went and I sat down on the ground between six trees, very dry trees. And I know because I love plants, I have a lot of plants. Not weed, because I can't legally grow it. But I have amazing legal plants in my apartment. And I sat there with these trees and I said, well, how cool would it be? If I could look down at the ground and find a four-leaf clover like I did at Newport, like I did at so many festivals in Europe, I look down and I find a four-leaf clover. I look down on the ground here and look, there are no clovers. Why? I sat there and I was like, why aren't there any clovers that look? There should be clovers everywhere. Luck is so lucky it doesn't need clovers. <laughs> it doesn't even need four leaf clovers. Awesome. Now maybe there is one somewhere because I gotta believe that there's always a four leaf clover. Maybe Willie's got a secret little like window garden of four leaf clovers. Only four leaf ones. So, How yeah, magical. <laughs> most people uh, their whole lives don't find a four leaf clover. <laughs> you trip over them all the time. It like. Yeah, but luck doesn't need them because it's yeah, pretty yeah, lucky. Luck doesn't need them. That's how That's cool Willie. it is. Yeah. <laughs> now, one last question. Weed or whiskey or both or neither? <laughs> well, that's a deep question. I must say that I am diabetic and anytime when I'm in a legal place and I'm able to like be around people who have weed, then it does help with my blood sugar levels. So I have a question in my mind as a person who studies herbs. I love my lavender, my eucalyptus. I love all of these herbs. And I grow the ones that I can legally grow. Why weed is illegal? <laughs> I have that question. Um, and so as a law abiding citizen, I must say I lean towards the whiskey, but I sure wouldn't mind if I was legally able to lean towards the weed because I feel like it's, you know, plants and the earth provide certain things that are like for your healing and for your heart. And if you use those things in moderation and in sweetness with honor towards them, then they can be quite great for your existence. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> Well, thank you for this interview and your song. This is really, really nice. I thank you. It. Thank you for your baby. And there you go. See? Sweet baby. You're the first person that's picked up.